Okay, so moving on to the next page, what I'm going to be doing is adding, subtracting, and solving with these rational functions. So the approach is a little bit different. On the page before, when I had to multiply, divide, simplify, I had to uh, factor the numerator and the denominator and then look for those common factors that I could take out between the numerator and the denominator. When I add and subtract fractions though, I need a least common denominator. And so that's the only thing I'll be factoring is the denominator. So I'll be doing the odds again, <clears throat> number 11, and the first two fractions, I cannot factor those, but in my third fraction, I can factor that. So I'm gonna move over here to number 10 for space. This is not number 10 though. And factors of 15, that get me to negative 8 are going to be negative 5 and negative 3. And so I can rewrite this as easy factoring of x minus 5 and x minus 3. So what's the least common denominator? If you don't see it, make that table I told you about. In the first fraction, I have x minus 3. In the second fraction, I have an x and in the third fraction, I have an x minus 3, but I also have an x minus 5, which will start its new column. And then when I bring everything down, <clears throat> my least common denominator is going to be x minus 3, wrap it in parentheses, x, and x minus 5. And when I change my fractions, I only need to change the ones that don't have a least common denominator, that don't have the least common denominator, and I only need to put what it still needs. So when I start with my first fraction, it needs an x and an x minus 5. So um, I'll put that on the bottom and on the top. My next fraction needs the x minus 5 and the x minus 3. And I just want to point out, eventually I will be multiplying those. And it will just be this, you know, uh, when I multiply x minus 5 and x minus 3. So I'm going to go ahead and just write that on there, that it will be in parentheses, x squared minus 8x uh, plus 15. And I'll have to put that on the bottom. Okay, then in my third fraction, I need an x. So it goes on the bottom and it goes on the top. So at this point, the denominator's done. It is this over here. It is here. Um, and so all my work's actually just going to be in the numerator, and that's what I'm going to show you now. So just in the numerator, in my first fraction, um, I had the x and the x minus 5 up here, which I'm just going to go ahead and multiply together. But I'll now have an x squared minus 5x with the x minus 2. And then in my second fraction, I'll have the 3 with the x squared minus 8x plus 15. And in my third fraction, I'll have 6 x squared. And so I need to have some neighbors meet some neighbors, so I'm going to start with my first set, and I'm going to get an x cubed, a minus 2x squared, and then I'm going to get a negative 5x squared, and you're going to see me start to um, stack my like terms as I do this. And then I get a positive 10x. And then moving to the next set, 3 distributes in, and I'm going to get a 3x squared, which will join this. Uh, negative 24x and 45. And then the 6x squared that's at the end, I'm just going to put with this. And so I've got a lot of x squareds to add up. But when I'm done, the numerator will be x cubed. If I add up um, the negative 2, the negative 5, the 3, and the 6, I get 2x squared and negative 14x over 45. And then that's going to be over, I don't have a lot of room here, my least common denominator, which is x, x minus 5, and x minus 3. Do not forget the denominator in your answer, even though the majority of the work came from your numerator. All right, number 13. Um, so this one, I cannot factor either denominator. But what I do see is that um, I can see the least common denominator. It is x minus 5 and x plus 1. So I'm going to take each fraction, and I'm going to add what it needs. So the first fraction still needs an x plus 1. And whatever I do to the bottom, I do to the top. And then the second fraction needs an x minus 5. And whatever I do to the bottom, I'll stick it right here, I do to the top. And wrap these in parentheses. So at this point, again, my denominator is done. The answer will have 
x plus 1 and x minus 5 in the denominator. So the work is now going to be in the numerator. So in my first fraction, as far as the numerators go, I have 7 with x plus 1. And in the other fraction, I have 4x with x minus 5. So I'm going to distribute. So I'm just distributing. And then I'm going to combine my like terms. And I'm going to go ahead and just put the answer as the numerator uh, for my final answer. So I'll start with 4x squared, um, 7x. Sorry, I left the x off the 20. So 7x and negative 20x will be uh, negative 13x. And then the 7 at the end. All right, one thing I forgot to do was just talk about what the domain, what x's I wouldn't pick. So in 13, I would not pick negative 1 or 5. And then just jumping back up to number 11, what would I not pick as far as answers go or x's go? I would not pick 0 for this, and I wouldn't pick 5 and 3 as well. So just wanted to go back and get that one. All right, um, number 15. So here's one where I need to add the opposite. And I just want to point out the adding the opposite actually backing up a little bit. So when you add the opposite in the subtraction problems on number 10, when you add the opposite, uh, I don't care about adding the opposite in the fraction, it's between the fractions. So when I add the opposite here, and some of you are not doing this, and that's fine, but I need to add the opposite to the entire numerator. So that's what the numerator will look like there. And number 12, when I add the opposite, it will become a negative 4. And on 14, when I add the opposite, it'll be a negative 3. And so on 15, when I add the opposite, it's a negative 3. All right, so if you can't see the least common denominator here, because I can't really factor x, 5x squared, and 10x cubed. I can, but you'll see it in the table that I'm going to make. Then what I'll do is I'll make my fraction table. And in my first fraction, I have an x. And my second fraction, I'm going to have an uh, x squared and a 5. And I'll go ahead and just let the x squared join the x. And then in the third fraction, I'll have an x cubed and a 10. So when I look at the first column, you know, I need a total of three x's. So I'll have an x cubed. And then when I look at the least common denominator between 5 and 10, that's just 10. So my least common denominator is going to be 10x cubed. So what does each fraction need to get to 10x cubed? Well, my first one needs a 10 and an x, so top and bottom. The next one needs a 2 and an x, top and bottom. And the last one has everything, so I don't need to do anything. So again, my denominator's done. It's 10x cubed. Uh, I'll go ahead and say that x cannot be 0. And now all the work is going to come in the numerator. So in the numerator, in my first fraction, I'm going to have the 10x and 5. And in the second fraction, I'm going to have the 2x and the 6. And then the third fraction is just negative 3's numerator. And then when I clean this up, 50x plus 12x uh, plus negative 3. Oh, and you know what? I just realized that my on the first fraction, I didn't give it the least common denominator. It actually needed a 10x squared. So let me fix that, which when, then when I multiply it, will make it 50x squared. Sorry about that. So my numerator is 50x squared plus 12x plus negative 3. That's a negative. And there's my whole answer for 15. All right, let's go to the final page. Sorry, not the final page. I'm going to be moving on to the solving. And again, I think, let's see, which set do I want to do? Um, I will do the evens over here. And again, I'm going to approach these problems the same way as I did the other. In class, I showed you two ways. And this is actually the second way. But I think, you know, if you're struggling with all the different ways to solve these problems, I'm going to keep the way I did these problems by finding the least common denominator and fixing the top and the bottom. And I'm going to do that same approach here. So first thing on 18 that I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly um, add the opposite. And that happens on 19. And it doesn't happen on 20. So the first thing I need to do is find that least common denominator. So in the three fractions on 18, I can only factor the first one. I can do a GCF of an x. 
And then I hope you can see, because I think this is a simpler one, that the least common denominator is x and x minus 2. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to fix the denominator so they have the least common denominators. And whatever I do to the bottom, I'm going to do to the top. So when I go to my first fraction, it already has the least common denominator, so I won't do anything to it. But the second one still needs an x. And whatever I do to the bottom, I do to the top. And then the last fraction needs an x minus 2. So whatever I do to the bottom, I do to the top. And then this is where I tried to compare it to a problem like this. You know, that if you had this as your problem, you know, when the bases were the same, the exponents were how you were going to solve it. So here, since all the denominators are the same, I'm just going to ignore the denominators like I ignored these sevens and focus on the numerators. So the first numerator is just 12. The second numerator is now negative 3x, and it's going to equal the other numerator of 3 with x minus 2. I'm going to quickly distribute. Uh, since there's one type of x, I'm just going to bring the x's over. So I'm going to start by adding 3x. Uh, that gives me 6x over here, so I'm going to move the 6 over by adding it. That's going to give me 18, and when I'm done, my answer is 3. So is the answer 3, or do I have what are known as extraneous solutions? So extraneous solutions are, again, you know, does my answer work in the original problem? And it does. I can put 3 in there. Um, moving on to 20. So 20 is pretty similar, I mean, as far as the least common denominator goes. Uh, the least common denominator will be x and x minus 2. So let's just make a little note over here, x and x minus 2. And again, I'm just going to fix them so that each fraction has the least common denominator. And whatever I do to the bottom, I'm going to do to the top. So the first one just needs an x. Top and uh, Whatever I do to the bottom, I do to the top. The second one needs an x plus 2. And again, whatever I do to the bottom, I do to the top. And the last one just needs an x. So whatever I do to the bottom, I do to the top. Now that the denominators are all the same, I'm going to ignore the denominators and focus on the numerators. All right, sorry, had to take a little pause there. So in my first fraction, the numerator is x with x plus 1. My second fraction's numerator is the 1 with the x plus 2, so I only need the x plus 2. And then the third fraction, well, I didn't need those parentheses then, is the x, which I'll put in front with the 2x plus 1. So I'm going to do a little distributing. Get x squared plus x plus the other x plus 2. Distribute again. I'm going to get 2x squared plus x. And now with more than one type of x, I'm going to have to bring everything over to one side. So first I'm going to subtract the x squared to over here. So it's gone. And on the right side of the equal sign, I now have an x squared. Um, these two together right now are 2x, so when I subtract the 2x over to the other side, I'm going to get a negative 1x, and then again, i got to get everything to one side, so I'm going to have to subtract the 2 over, and now it's equaling 0, it's going to be factorable, so what are factors of negative 2 that get me to negative 1, they are negative 2 and 1, and it's easy factoring. So my factors will be x minus 2 and x plus 1, and that's going to make my solutions be 2 and negative 1. So do these work as answers, or are any of them an extraneous solution? Well, this x being 2, you might think it's extraneous, but it actually works up here. And negative 1 works here. So these are actually, and I did not mean to put the equal sign like that, my answers do get to be 2 and negative 1. Uh, just a heads up, there will be an extraneous solution here on 19, okay? And let's move on to the very last part.